They were the most formidable doubles team in PBA history. Mark Roth and Marshall Holman. Today, in a tournament named for those two legends, Hall of Famer Norm Duke and his partner, Wes Malott, will try to successfully defend their title against three other teams, including Phenom Jason Belmonte and his partner, Bill O'Neill. It's the Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship. Next. Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana, plays host to the stepladder finals of the Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship. Our five finalists qualifying in the fifth position, Dom Barrett and Oscar Palermo, the international team, will face the Texans, DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado in our opening match. The winner will get Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill. Dino Castillo and Tom Doherty are waiting in the semifinal and are defending champions in the title match. Hall of Famer Norm Duke and Wes Malott. And greetings from Indy. Mike Jakubowski with PBA. Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. Kimberly Pressler is lane side. Randy, normally the greatest in the world compete for singles titles, but titles on the line today and a chance to team up as doubles teams. Uh, Mike J, back, back when I was a full-time touring player, this was probably my favorite event. Um, I, I got to team up with my good friend Tom Kreitz. We bowled a lot of doubles events together. We made a couple shows back in the day at the old showboat in Las Vegas, and it was a lot of fun. But make no mistake about it, we were trying to, to win a tour title just like these 10 players are here today. And I think that we have to start by talking about our defending champs who have the number one seed, and that's Norm Duke and Wes Malott. Talk about an odd couple. Norm Duke stands about five foot four. He's going to throw the ball really straight up the outside part of the lane. And his partner, Wes Malott, well, he's about six four, and he's going to be standing in the middle part of the lane, and he's going to be hooking it. But these two guys ham and egg it really well together, and that's why they are your defending champs. And I think the best part of this tournament, it's named after the most formidable doubles team in PBA competition, and that's Mark Roth and Marshall Holman. And titles on the line, Wes Malat with a win would earn his 10th, and Norm Duke would extend his Hall of Fame resume. And now the third member of our broadcast team, Kimberly Pressler, is laneside. Thanks, guys. So, Norm, you guys are the defending champions, and you guys pretty much dominated in match play to get here. Why are you guys such a good team together? I think it's because we're exactly alike in every single way. I can see that. Yeah. No, really, I think we gel really well together because we are so different. Uh, I. Uh, tend to like to go straight on the lanes. He likes to hook the ball, so we're never really on top of one another, creating a bunch of havoc. And I think that was one of the big things. And Wes, uh, you normally are the anchor. Are you planning on doing that today? And what's your strategy? Well, the boss over here pretty much said he doesn't plan on changing things. So uh, we'll we'll see how things go during uh, the the previous matches, and and if there's any need for any change, we'll we'll make that change uh, on the fly. All right, then. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys in the finals. Back to you in the booth. Doubles competition in the Roth Holman. Our opening match, the Englishman Dom Barrett and the twin Finn Oscar Palermo take on the Texans. DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado. The winners move on to face Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill. Dino Castillo and Tom Doherty in match three. And then Duke and Malat for the title. One thing to remember in today's matches, each player will stay on a lane. So, for example, Dom Barrett will be on the left lane exclusively, and Oscu Palermo will be on the right, at least in this first match. And Randy, those lanes covered with the blue oil. And 46 feet in length, pretty long pattern, high volume, and you're going to see a couple different ways to attack this. You're going to see some players trying to go fairly straight from out, and then the other players are going to be hooking it, but not that big rainbow we're used to seeing. Open shot from Dom Barrett is a perfect strike. Remember, at 46 feet in length, there's only 14 feet of lane left, so you're not going to see the big change of direction down lane. Now, here comes an up-and-coming star, Sean Maldonado. I really enjoyed our time we had with him the other day, Mike J, and talking with him. I know he's been close on several occasions. 
take a good look at this up and coming star. Opening shot from Sean Maldonado, and he hits the strike in a really interesting style. It's a two handed style. He does use his thumb. He's got a little bit of a hop there at the uh, foul line when he lets go of it, but still, all in all, this kid's a really good young player. Watch this. Looks a lot like uh, some guy by the name of Jason Belmonte. Very similar. And the hop is a good thing. And in fact, DJ Archer also has a hop. It's a timing maneuver. Now here's Archer. DJ Archer, a recent winner at the World Series of Bowling, defeating Ronnie Russell in the Chameleon Championship. Really fun to see and watch DJ Archer's win. I don't know how much it meant to him. Very emotional win. Boy, did he bowl phenomenally that day. Oscar Palermo and Don Barrett have bowled all over the world. They room often, and they're great friends. Opening shot for Oscar, and Oscar drives 10 back. Double apiece. A pair of PBA World Champions. Here's Oscar winning his in 2011 at the World Series. Dom Barrett got his in 2013. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> right after a spike Break. of the rosin bag. Great react. All strikes. And you can see right away what I was talking about in the oil pattern. Look how straight Don Baird is going versus Oscu Palerma. Perfect through three and a half frames as Sean Maldonado gets up. <clears throat> talking with him, he uh, finished fifth in Japan uh, not long ago. He said, all it is out here for me now, guys, is getting more experience, and with experience comes confidence. Confidence stroke and 10 back for Maldonado. Randy, Sean also saying he likes the communication aspect that's evident in doubles play. Yeah, he's a real huge communicator, and, and he likes that, uh, that feedback that he gets from his partner, DJ Archer. Likes to talk about the patterns, likes to talk about what DJ is seeing, really helps him visually. DJ Archer earned his first PBA Tour title after a lot of years of trying at the World Series of Bowling, up now in the fourth frame. Doubles action, opening match oh, in the no. Roth Holman. Oh no, it's high, three, six, and a 10. Well, it looked like it was a little slow and grabby out of yeah. his hand. That's terrible. Ah, that's bad. See how much farther that ball was out on the lane, and sure enough, left of target and through the nose. DJ stands for Danny James DJ Archer. Cross lane at the three, six, and ten. And chops the three off the six and kicks the ten out for an open frame. Okay. See if Osku Palerma can capitalize on that open. Oscar, one of the strongest players on tour. Uh, he enjoys working out in the gym. Randy, uh, he uh, works on flexibility and at the same time trying to be as explosive as possible. Well, when you throw it like this, you better be flexible. Otherwise, you're going to hurt yourself. And plenty of explosion on that release. Fourth frame. And doesn't explode the 10 pin. Mike, that messenger came over so fast. You and our, our booth, our vantage point is down lane. That messenger almost came through the sidewall and Almost took you out, my friend. Avoided. Watch how fast this messenger goes across. Avoided like, injury. Yeah, it looked like the head pin actually ran into the four pin. There's only one thing better than Oscar throwing strikes, and that's him assaulting ten pins. And you could just hear that reaction from the crowd. Yeah, that uh, spare ball is coming at you with, with a lot of velocity and sometimes gets him into trouble where he overthrows and misses fairly easy spares. So spare for Barrett and Palerma handing over now to Dom, who will operate in the fifth frame. Dom, 29 years old, out of Colchester, England. Four PBA Tour titles, including a major. Now up in the fifth. 
there. Pulling it. Paul Emmer lead by 14. Just a touch high, four pin. I'm not moving. Didn't do it. A little harder, maybe. All right. Two of the greatest ever right there. Marshall Holman on your left. Mark Roth on the right. Boy, as a kid growing up, I watched them bowl a lot on television and just absolutely fun to watch and just two of the greatest competitors our sport has ever known. And if there weren't people trying to back up on the approach like Holman and have your heels off the back of the approach, and if there weren't people trying to twist it like Roth did, those two led a generation that still echoes to this day. Absolutely. Maldonado now up for the Texans after the open frame, fifth frame. They trail by 13. Didn't like something, just creeps high for the fourth pin. Yeah, just a pinch left as well, but only a little bit, and he's just faced with the four pin as opposed to his partner who left the 3-6-10. There's going to be a lot of transition on this telecast because of the power where the players are playing. Sean Maldonado talking about chess, and really there's a lot of similarities between chess and bowling. Well, I, my grandfather taught me to play chess when I was four years old, and um, I was a junior chess champion at age seven, played it all the way up until I was about 12 years old, and then I got into other sports like basketball and whatnot. And I'll tell you what, from a concentration standpoint, I had a decent record on TV, and I attribute that to chess. Archer, strike. So a strike on the board for DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado. And the opening match at the Roth Holman doubles is underway. More action from Woodland Bowl in Indy when we return. The Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By Columbia 300. Grab some friends, have some fun. Let's bowl. By AMF, roll this way. And by Radical Bowling Technologies. Wow, that's radical. Welcome back to Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana. Marshall Holman, Mark Roth, the best doubles team ever. Qualifying and match play taking place at AMF Bolero Lanes in Milwaukee. Here's your uh, fourth qualifiers, Sean Maldonado and DJ Archer, and Archer on the hop as they finish. Wow, what was that? Our number two seeds, Dino Castillo and Tom Doherty also getting the job done to solidify their self in the semifinal. Extra frame tournament highlights. Other finishers as 12 doubles teams make it to match play. Chris Barnes teaming with Tommy Jones, Ronnie Russell and Chris Loeschetter. Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Tom Smallwood, Dick Allen with Jake Peters. Ryan Simonelli, Parker Bone the third, Brad Angelo and Brian Himmler and Anthony Pepe and Rhino Page make match play. Top five have advanced thus far. Here's your opening match. Oscar Palerma and Dom Barrett with a 13 pin advantage over DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado. Each player will fill their frames. The anchor will bowl the entire 10th frame. Uh, Oscu's ball hit the pin so hard it slapped the nine pin silly, didn't know which direction to fall in. And the nine pin shaved in your Barbasol. Close shave of the day. Got hit by a couple different pins there. A lot of power from Oscu. Obviously, that two handed style is very popular these days and creates a lot of power, a lot of ball reaction, a lot of pin action. Seventh frame for Barrett Palerma. 
Just outside the second arrow and packed hit. Double, increasing the lead oh, to 23. Man. I think the thing that I really like about Don Barrett is the fact that, you know, he made uh, he I made it a him. point to tell us how he's really been working on his versatility, and you can see it right here. Takes his hand out of it because Don Barrett can hook the lane. Takes his hand out of it, up the back of the ball, keeps it right on line and jams it right into the 1-3. Here's the approach of Maldonado. Both hands on the rock all the way through. A little high. Wow, 4-6. I think that's the transition I spoke about earlier because Sean liked that ball, that shot off of his hand, and it hooked a lot in the back part of the lane. Going through the nose, you could see it almost looks like he actually moved left, and the ball still went high. Open frame for DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado. <clears throat> DJ owns two regional titles in addition to his one career PBA title. Fifth arrow. That's a ringing 10. Six went up and around the 10 pin. That's the last thing you need to see when you're trailing by 35 with only a couple of frames left. But watch the second pin from your right go around the 10. DJ and Sean are in a lot of trouble. Down goes the 10 pin for Archer. Spare conversion in the eighth. Palerma and Barrett in command. Big lead and strikes working. Oscar's been a member of Team Finland since 2004 in his additional international competition. Powerful shot, splits the eight and the nine. Leads increase now to 45. Don Barrett can pretty much close the do door on this match with a strike right here in the ninth. Speaking earlier of the chess analogy, Randy, how, how do you stay a move or two ahead in both? A lot of it's an educated guess and just anticipating, but you also have to watch ball motion. Foundation frame for Barrett and Palerma. When, uh, it's a little, a little more than that. It's a little light in a two pin. Looked just a little fast. You see the ball just never gripping the lane surface, and therefore it went light. But leaving the two pin for a professional, pretty simple single pin right. spare conversion. They are in the 230s with a mark in the 10th. The best Sean Maldonado and DJ Archer can shoot right now, 213. Six men. Match is over. Barrett and Palerma will advance. They will take on a guy that is the hottest bowler, the best bowler on the planet, Jason Belmonte and his partner, Bill O'Neill. Oscar Palerma and Dom Barrett make it past their first test here at the Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship. Can they knock off Belmonte and O'Neill? Find out next. Welcome back to Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana. Continuation of the Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship. In our opening match, 
Don Barrett and Oscar Palermo defeat DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado 237-179 final score and move on to face Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill. Today's Ebonite flashback, Mark Roth and Marshall Holman teamed together to make five TV finals as a doubles team and won two doubles titles together. The second of these was at the 1984 Showboat PBA Doubles Classic in oh, Las Vegas. Mark. Roth and Holman, tournament leaders. Mark was the only one to rip racks like that back then. <laughs> right up there. And teaming with Holman to defeat Ted Hannes and Dave Houston. Kimberly Pressler is with the greatest doubles team in PBA history. I sure am, and it's such an honor to be down here talking to these two guys. And Mark, let's start with you. What's it like to have a tournament named after you? It's a great honor, and especially with Marshall. You know, we both doubles together. We won three or four times. We had lots of fun, and, you know, it's a great honor to be with him, too, right now. What is your favorite memory of you two bowling together? Well, we, I used to go first to line him up, and uh, there was one match in San Jose. I think it was the first year we bowled together. I went, missed the head pin, chopped a spare, and then I left a 4-9. I had 18 in the second, and I struck out, and he shoots 250. We both shot 250 that game and destroyed our opponents. And, <laughs> and that's exactly why you guys were such a dominant pair together. Thank you so much for your time. It was great talking to you. Now, Marshall. Goodness, what is one of the traits that you think makes a successful team? Well, with Mark and I, we know our games were similar, so that, that really helped us out. Now, the leading pair today of uh, West Milan and Norm Duke, they are a contrast of, of deliveries. Uh, but for Mark and I, like as Mark said, he lined me up. He made it easy on me. When, uh, when Mark would throw the first ball, I would watch how he threw it, and then it would give me the information I needed to get up in the first frame and do well. Well, let's talk about that information. How much is this about communications between you guys or the teams out here? Well, in, in, our, in our case, it was, it was all about communication, and it was all about confidence in each other. You know, when, when Mark asked me to bowl with him, I was, a, I was an up-and-coming player, and Mark was an established superstar. So not only was, did we have great communication, but, but by Mark asking me to bowl with him, it gave me a lot of confidence to continue to be even better than I, than I was well, it is so great to have you both here. Thank you guys so much for your time, and we'll send it back to the booth. Don't you think it's funny that Mark decided to mention the fact that he lined Marshall up? That is the person I'd like to line me up. Roth Holman. Roth Holman, PBA doubles. Our next match coming up, Barrett Palermo, Belmonte O'Neill next. The newly renovated Woodland Bowl is packed with bowling fans at the Roth Holman PBA doubles. As action continues, this Columbia 300 fun fact. The first PBA doubles event was the 1976 Showboat Festball doubles in Las Vegas. The event was won by the team of Bill Straub and Tom Warren. Kimberly Pressler is with our number three seats. Thanks, Mike. So, Bill, you and Jason have both told me on numerous occasions that the person you want to beat the most, the most on the PBA tour is each other. Has your opinion changed now that you guys are teammates in this? I don't want to beat him today. Well, actually, I do want to beat him. If I throw more strikes than him, I think that uh, we have a pretty good chance to win. But uh, I'm looking forward to him doing his part, just like he did the uh, TSC final. Well, it's still very competitive, I see. Now, Jason, what's it like bowling with uh, one of your best friends? Yeah, it's awesome. It's a privilege to bowl with Billy. I've watched him bowl around the world and, and I enjoy bowling with the guy. He's one of my best mates. So, well, that'll determine or that may change depending on how he bowls today. So uh, hopefully we both bowl well and we can uh, have a beer afterwards together. All right. Well, good luck to both of you guys today. Guys, back to you in the booth. Hey, Mike J. Did you get the number of that bus? <laughs> no. <laughs> the one that, that Bill Monty just drove over Bill O'Neill. Those two trade barbs like shrimp on the barb. You're going to have to come up with a way better one than that. <laughs> it's fun to watch them interact. 
Uh, they my, do have a great time together, though. My favorite is when Jason just simply calls Mr. O'Neill William. No one calls Bill O'Neill no, William. No one calls Bill O'Neill William except Jason Belmonte, as far as I know. Ten pin messenger, yeah. yeah. Slow roller call. for the Dominator. It's a great break here. Now watch the head pin. It goes to the sidewall and it gets spun around and it takes the 10 out. Not exactly your wicked fast messenger, but it's still 10. Let's see how Bill O'Neill's going to attack this championship pair. Pretty, pretty straight down and in right there. Jason Belmonte at the Masters. Not once, not twice, but back to back to back victories. Never been done. And he did it with throwing magnificent shots, making great split conversions. That was an impossible oil pattern. The way that pattern broke down, they got brutally, brutally tough. And then the Tournament of Champions trying to go back to back there. He made a great comeback against Sean Rash. And then just really took it to the tournament leader to win and defend his title at the Tournament of Champions. And he does not get the messenger. Ten pin stands. That one went in front of the ten pin, and this guy's just a, a an incredible, incredible talent. And he's really showcased it early in 2015. And we talked a little bit about it. You know, he, he won the Masters back win. to back to back. It's never been done before. In the history of the Tournament of Champions, only one player has won back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back TSCs, and that was Jason Couch. And Belmonte had a chance to do that, except for the fact that he finished second to Pete Weber back in 2013. It's quite a run. How about five out of six for the Masters and Tournament of Champions? Absolutely amazing. And now Palermo. Ten pin. Back-to-back -back ten pins for the two-handers. Bill Monty's got such a huge lead already on player of the year race for this season. He's already won that honor back to back. Palermo goes with the end over end 10 pin conversion that time instead of the straight cannon shot. Roth Holman, PBA Doubles Championship. Dom Barrett owns four career PBA Tour titles and is a PBA World Champion for his major. Even match, third frame. That's oh. high, 4 7 10. That's way on it. Pretty bad shot. <sighs> You heard him say it, just wait on it. It was a bad shot. He pulled it from the top, ball went left, through the face. Pays the price, 4 7 10. It's tough in doubles when you. You have an open frame, you feel like you let your your partner down and it's a little it's bad enough when you do it when you're bowling singles, but you don't have anybody looking at you going, hey, what are you doing? Each player said that it's almost tougher to throw yeah. it as a part of doubles and you don't want to let that partner down. It, it, it's a great point and, it, and it's very true. You know, right now Oski wants to console Don Barrett and say, hey, don't worry about it, shake it off. But on the other hand, he doesn't know what to say. Roll Tech tournament stats, Bill O'Neill high game, 299, low game of 173. Cross lane at the 10 pin. And that 
right. stat coming Come. in this doubles championship. O'Neill, the seventh time member of Team USA. Jason Bilmani, the 2009 PBA Rookie of the Year, and how quickly he's built Hall of Fame credentials. Oh, he's already there. Ten pin and roller. No. Well, he struggled a little bit on this pattern in the Players' Championship. You remember, he had some unusual carry, soft tens, kind of like that one there. And, and early on, I'm seeing the same thing. No, I'll take them both back. Two bad shots, honestly. Like I just, I've missed them left. I feel like if I move a little bit right and I get it to the hook too early, I'm scared I'm going to do what Dom did. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm just going to get my angles a little bit more open at the front. I think it'll be good. So what he's trying to, what he's telling Bill O'Neill is he's going to open up the angles through the front part of the lane so that the ball gets a little bit farther right down lane. It'll come off the dry spot harder. Lerma. Another ring and ten for Oskud. He's pulled a real nice game thus far, the two shots that he's thrown. He pulled a real solid game in the last match. He looks way more under control and much more rock solid at the foul line. Obviously, the gym working out there, getting back into shape has really paid dividends. And another ten pin blasted out into the parking lot here outside of Woodland Bowl. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Have to send the pin chaser across the street for that one. That is chasing. Barrett and Palermo trail by 12. A lot of frames left, fifth frame. The winner here moves on to face Dino Castillo and Tom Doherty in the semifinal. Just outside of third air, and that one uh, blows out the left side of the rack. All right, well. Nice little shot there, a little adjustment maybe for Dom, but he makes sure that this one doesn't go high. Good pin carry as well. And strike on the board. Hands off to the partner with a chance to double, but first, O'Neill. Fifth frame working on the spare for his team. Flush. Going with a oh, heater, pretty straight, keeping it in, in play and online. And nice shot by Bill O'Neill. No doubles yet. Belmonte gets the first crack at it. Look at that. Back to back to back Masters, back to back Tournament of Champions, back to back Player of the Year. Sixth frame. High, 4 9 mm. split. Come on. Well, opening up his angles, he also lowered his ball speed. That made the ball overhook in the back part of the lane. And there's a 4-9 split staring at Jason Belmonte on the left lane. Still no doubles. Open frame for Belmonte O'Neill. And handing the lead to Barrett and Palermo on the bench. O'Neill Belmonte will need to recover from the open frame. Final half of this match is coming next when we return to Woodland Bowl. Mike Jakubowski with Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler at Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Roth Holman. PBA Doubles Championship rolls on. Let's go down to Kimberly. Thanks, guys. 
So DJ, uh, you guys just couldn't seem to find your sink down there. Why is that? You know, I just, um, I was a little bit nervous, to be honest with you, Kimberly. And, um, you know, I just didn't make any, uh, didn't make very good shots, you know, so that's uh, that's on me. You know, I felt really bad because I felt like Sean, you know, I, I owed him a lot for, you know, getting him to the TV show. And, and I just, I didn't perform today. So hopefully, you know, next time, you know, we'll do a lot better. Hopefully next time. Thank you so much for your time. Now, Sean, um, how much fun was it? as a team for you guys leading up to this? Uh, it was it was really fun. You know, me and me and DJ, we communicate really well. We mesh a lot. Uh, we talk a lot. And we, we're just out there having a, a great time. We're doing what we love to do. Um, all we can do now is just put some work in and get ready for next year. Uh, that's some good words to live by. Thank you guys so much for your time. You. Back to the booth. Don Barrett and Oscar Palermo lead by two pins with a strike working. and. Uh, Here's Track Tech Talk with Randy. Well, you know, Bill O'Neill's got a little more traditional game with a lot of power, but the one thing that I really love about what Bill O'Neill does is he keeps his elbow to the inside part of the bowling ball, especially through release, because it, that puts his hand in a perfect leverage position at the release point, and that's what helps him create power and revolutions. Belmonte and O'Neill trail by two pins and Barrett Palerma have a strike working. Oscu can increase the lead to 12 with a strike in the sixth frame. Great shot. It looked like he moved a little bit farther left and put a great touch on that shot. He's been real solid in this game, going ringing 10, ringing 10, and then that perfect flush strike right there. Don Barrett can increase his team's lead now to 22, following the open frame by Jason Belmonte in the sixth. So Oscu hands off to Don Barrett. Chance to Turkey here, seventh frame. That one looked like it caught a little early. Yeah, you could oh, see no. it. It just kind of checked a little bit and then went a, a little high, but oh, it's, like it's just a four pin and not a four nine like we saw Jason leave. Here's what you were talking about right here, Mike J. Right at about that 46 foot line, it just kind of checks and goes a little left. Up and at them as Barrett converts. 11 pin advantage. Just one more. Palermo and Barrett have balled all over the world. They met at international competition. And now back over to Belmonte O'Neill after the open frame. Light two, four, ten. Mm. They're in trouble. Looking to go back to back open frames if O'Neill doesn't slide the two into the 10 here. Open frame, back to back opens for our number three seeds. The winner here moves on to face Dino Castillo and Tom Doherty. Defending champions Norm Duke and Wes Malott are seeded into the title match. PBA titles on the line here. Belmonte kicks the 10 out. I'll give us another one. That gives him t his team some life. They can strike out for 203. Oscu and Don Bar Barrett are still in the 190s. Good looking shot here. It almost looked like he moved right and went a little straighter. Oscu up on the eighth, working on the spare. Oh, six around the 10. Boy, it looked like it was just a little right, but another vicious ringing 10 pin. Sure what else Oscu could do. He's throwing great shots, but ball's not going through the pins the right way, obviously. And this looks like it's just got a little bit more angle to it. And it's another ringing 10. 
<laughs> we are in, we are in Indianapolis. There's Gasoline Alley, and then there's that Blue Alley. Did you hear the crowd when he let go of that bowling ball? That was hysterical. Oh, that was so good. They were making a sound like like a race car going down the going down the uh, the racetrack, and they were like, "Meow." Oh, it was great. Another temp, and that one of the flat variety. Hey, hard. Some type. Type. Well, we have the possibility of a tie now. Both teams take it off the sheet. They'll tie it 203, 203. Dom asking for tape as to avoid the shot clock <laughs> violation. When you use tape, what are you? Uh, what's the placement, and where are you trying to put it? Uh, well, most most people, their thumbs are oval, and most will put it in the back part of the thumb hole. Um, the reason being is sometimes the thumb will shrink or swell, depending on the temperature in the building, humidity. A lot of times players will tape up their spare balls. Um, Ah. Because they're not trying to do a whole lot to it. Mm, awful. Just making sure that you, uh, Still you have a, a good snug fit. I, I, I'm a big proponent of a tight thumb hole because I think the less gripping, the less squeezing, the better. You know, back in the day, we weren't taught that. Most of, uh, most of my colleagues back then used really big thumb holes. Foundation frame. Ah. Nice. No footing, but the ball clears the deck. I'm not sure if he hit his ankle or not, or if he just if it was just a uh, tweaking his ankle at the foul line. Let's take a look. Oh, he nicked his ankle. And the ball still gets back and goes flush. I've seen it all. But you know what? That may be the biggest break they've gotten to this tournament. If Jason Belmonte strikes out, they can't lose. Kick save and a beauty. Yeah, no doubt. Tenth frame. This is to even it up. Light. Oh. Two, four, eight. How Double wood. Hook. Boy, he liked it off his hand, too, and the ball just never picked up. Watch this. He really likes it. He starts running it out, and it just never picks up down lane. And open frame in the 10th, 168 finale. That ball didn't hook either. You don't say that very often about Jason Bomani when he throws a bowling ball down the lane, it not hooking, but that was back-to-back -back shots that didn't curve. So Barrett and Palermo will advance. Done. Barrett and Palermo move on to the semifinal where Dino Castillo and Tom Doherty await. Make sure you get this. Thank you. So Oscar misses the opportunity to throw a fill ball, but 178, 168, Barrett and Palermo move on. Semi-final match is coming up next when we return to Indianapolis. The Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship is brought to you by Barbasol. Life is full of close shaves. Make sure your close shave is a Barbasol close shave. By Ebonite, Bullet Forward. By Hotelplanner.com, the best place to book hotel rooms. Best rooms, best rate, guaranteed.
and by Storm. Bowlers, serving bowlers. Storm is the bowlers company. Roth Holman PBA doubles rolls on at Woodland Bowl. Head on over to PBA.com for official PBA merchandise and apparel. PBA League t-shirts plus PBA hats, polos, and more. Click on the shop tab of the PBA.com homepage. Let's take a quick break from doubles action here in Indy to recap a new event contested recently. The DHC PBA Japan Invitational from Tokyo, a tournament that continues the PBA's long tradition of competition in Japan. 32 player invitational field. Top five make the stepladder. Sean Maldonado, who we saw earlier in doubles, was the number five qualifier against Stu Williams. Williams completes the second of his two four baggers to defeat Maldonado, 241 237. Moving on to face Liz Johnson, the first woman to bowl on three stepladders for a PBA Tour title. Stewart opening the door for Liz with this split. Liz strikes in the eighth and ninth to complete a four bagger. She must strike in the 10th to move on. Split for Johnson and Stuart Williams advances. Semi-final match, Williams against Chris Barnes. No beating Barnes in this semi-final. Plenty of strikes for Chris. Front 10. Front 11. Barnes for perfection in Japan. And he got it. Five million yen bonus to advance to the championship match. Barnes advancing to face Mike Fagan for the title. Barnes uh, in control until the ninth frame. And this 4-9 split opens the door for Fagan, who can shut him out. Mike Fagan up ninth frame, needs strikes in the ninth, 10th, and 11th to shut out Barnes. And a flat 10 pin. Fagan then needs to double a nine to force Barnes to double, but leaves another 10 pin. Chris Barnes just needs a mark to win. And he kicks the 10 out. Chris Barnes wins, and another 5 million yen prize champion at the DHC PBA Japan Invitational. Back to action here at the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Stepladder. Dom Barrett, Oscar Palermo, 237-179 in the opener, defeating Archer and Maldonado. Put a 178 on the board to defeat Jason Bilmani and Bill O'Neill. Mike Jakubowski with Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. Randy, very interesting lane play. What is left on this lane is uh, two more doubles teams are yet to play. I, I, I'm not really sure. It's, it's real interesting. You know, you've got Oscu Palermo on the right lane, and he's hooking it. You have Don Barrett on the left lane. He's going real straight. The team they're going to bowl next can do the exact same thing. They can literally mirror what Oscu and Dom are doing, and that would be Tom Doherty and Dino Castillo. Tom Doherty doesn't use his thumb, so he can get right in there where Oscu is, play the exact same line. Dino Castillo is really good at going straight and fast and direct up the lane. So he could theoretically play exactly where Dom's playing. And if you're Norm Duke and Wes Mallott, what are you looking at as you anticipate a title match? You're looking at which lane gives you the best look, whether it's going straight or hooking it. Right now, every, everything is pointing to the right lane hooking a lot because Osku's been there and he's been burning up a track in the middle part of the lane. The left lane, obviously, that's the straight lane. But until you get on it and actually use your practice balls, it's kind of hard to tell which is the best fit for you. We have our semifinal match coming up when we return to Woodland Bowl. Tom Doherty and Dino Castillo meet Barrett in Palermo. Coming up next. Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship rolls on at Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis. Our semifinal match is coming up next. 
And Kimberly Pressler is with our number two oh, seeds. Thanks, guys. Tom, you know, when we talked yesterday, uh, you said that you really want to win this for Dino. Why is that? Just he doesn't have a title. He, he's a good bowler. He should have a title, and uh, we're going we're gonna to take care of that today. You feel like that's putting a little more pressure on you to make this happen? It is, but you know what? When it comes down to it, it's about throwing good shots. He'll set me up, and I'll, I'll close the deal. All right. So, Dino, he said he wants to win this for you. What would this win mean for you? Uh, you know, for me, it's just uh, – it doesn't really mean anything more than, you know, to, it doesn't justify anything for me. What, what's more for me is for him to have another title. Oh, look at that. Teamwork right here. Good luck to you both, guys. Can you feel the love? <laughs> Speaking of Tom Doherty winning on the PBA Tour, not this time at the 2011 Barbasol PBA Tournament of Champions, although a ball struck a pin on every shot in those 10 frames to shoot 100. Well, he handled that very gracefully, and, and it was nice to see him come back to win the 2012 Scorpion Championship. You know, I really like what both players said in their interview with Kimberly. Uh, you know, Tom wants to win this for Dino. Dino's such a, a good guy. He's been a, a longtime player out here, and, and uh, you know, he would like to do it for his partner. That's a pretty good combination. Don Barrett and Oscar Palermo begin play here in the semifinal. Two matches, two wins. And 7 and 10 go in unison. And just remember, Mike, there's no I in team. All right. <laughs> Dino Castillo, the Lone Star, looking for his first PBA Tour title. 43 years old, 11 years plying the trade. Look at that great style. Man, great result. And very interesting that Dino's going to bowl on the right lane and go straight. Tom Doherty's going to hook it on the left lane. Dino's got that loft game, too. He likes to throw it and get it in the air. Dino says, I can go hard and straight, and I can go harder and straighter. Partner Tom Doherty working on the strike. And he packs the pocket. And that's new territory on that left lane. Pretty good shot and ends up in a great spot. You know, the only player that we saw in it all was in our very first match with DJ Archer. He only threw five shots on that lane. Palermo strikes. Rock solid. He's been rock solid all day for their team. That was terrible. Just making really good shots, even though you just heard him say that was terrible. If he didn't say that, nobody in the building or watching at home would have known. All right. Speaking to both Barrett oh, and yeah. Palermo, they are building an American fan base. So many trips over to the States. And wherever they go, people know their names. Dom Barrett, Oscu Palermo. It's like going to Cheers. 3rd frame. And Dom packs the pocket. All right, we've got action. Last game, or excuse me, last match, 178, 168. A lot of that had to do with bad carry, a couple open frames. Yeah, I can see that. We've got action now, though. Castillo looking to match Barrett and Palermo here in the semifinal. <laughs> little snug, gets the job done. Yeah, a little, little, <laughs> little tight to the pocket there, but it's still 10 down. <laughs> Tom Doherty says comedy is the key to our team. We knew we would enjoy bowling with each other. Keeps each other loose. Excuse me. Keeps both players loose by a little levity. That never hurt anyone. Doherty on the strike and a very interesting push away. He's very unique for a guy that doesn't use his thumb. He only uses one hand. And 
He really overextends that push way to delay the ball into the swing just enough to get his legs underneath him. And it's more of a traditional style with a no thumb release. So all strikes. Oscar needs to uh, strike here to keep pace. Keep pace, he does. He blows that rack apart. Like as good as I've seen Oscu throw it in a very long time. Here's another look with that two-handed style and just as solid as I've seen him. Randy. Looks really good. What happened to the scoring pace? They're throwing more strikes. What changed with the lanes to allow that? I mean, they hit the pocket a lot the last game, but the carry was awful. Carry better now, fifth frame. Carry continues to be better. Uh, the Lakes were probably going through a little transition for this team. They figured it out. Go good one here. Let's go. The players are also going more flush, like in high flush. Got a better chance of striking there usually. Remember last time on this lane, Dino Castillo, just a little snug. Oh, God. That does get high. Three, four, right. six, seven split. Just an overthrow. His hand stayed in it too long, and the ball missed target left. He's trying to get this one to hold line. By doing so, gives a little bit more air. He gets it left to target, and there's the result. Tough break. That was close. Three out of four. All right, Park. That was a great try by Dino Castillo I'm trying to avoid the open frame. Run at it. Hammer tough spare replay. Sometimes you just don't get them all. So now Castillo and Doherty after the open trail by 26, six frame. Dirty backs off for just a little commotion in the audience. Ring, ten. Good shot. Dino's feeling terrible about the open frame for his team. And right now, Don Barrett, Oscu Palermo in the driver's seat with the front five. Great shot here by Tommy. And the six just wrapping around the 10. Hang on. Mm, oh didn't hang on. Open frame. My bad. Back-to-back -back open frames, Barrett Palerma in control. Winner advances to the title match. More of our semifinal when we return to Woodland Bowl. Coming up on March 29th at 5 Eastern PBA League quarterfinals, our next PBA Tour telecast. Join us. 5 Eastern, March 29th on ESPN. Let's go down to Kimberly. Thank you, guys. And Bill, what happened when you lost your footing in the ninth frame out there? Uh, you know, I was playing the lanes a little bit, uh, you know, different than the way I normally do. I was trying to loft it a little bit, and uh, I got out of time in the in the ninth, and just got my upper body a little forward, and my foot slipped out from under me when I did it. My hand turned early, right into my right into my ankle, and um, I didn't watch the shot got in the lane, so I have absolutely no idea how it struck. I think if I did that a hundred more times, uh, there's there's no way it would struck even once. Well, what went through your mind when you guys got that third open frame? Uh, I thought we were in a lot of trouble. 
Um, you know, I knew their their ball reaction wasn't great, and they weren't uh, having a lot of success striking. So I knew we maybe had an outside shot, and then they got a couple of spares. So I thought if we put a little heat on them, you know, we could have could have got it done. And Jason, you know, he made a good shot in the in the tenth, and it just uh, you know it just didn't, didn't hook and didn't work out. Thank you for your time, Bill. Now, Jason, it didn't look like you were comfortable out there. You kept changing your line. Why is that? Yeah, it was really difficult, Kimberly. I mean, um, I, where I thought was good in practice, you know, the first few shots, I didn't quite get it perfectly, and I could just tell that that, that angle wasn't going to really help out if I, if I wasn't absolutely perfect. Uh, William made a suggestion to move a little further right, and I did that through one really good shot. Uh, and then the one in the 10th, you know, I, I wish I could get it back because I know I could throw it a little better, um, probably see a little bit more shape down the lane, get a little further to the right. And, you know, I felt like if I doubled there, um, the way Oscar's ball was going through the pins, he was having a hard time striking, so I could have put a lot of pressure on him. And, yeah, I don't feel so good right now. Let him, you know, it's one thing to let yourself down, but, you know, when you let your mate down, it's, uh, I don't feel so good. Well, the next time we actually see you guys is during the PBA League, and I guess we'll see you then. And thank you guys so much for your time. Cheers. Guys, back to you. Barrett and Palermo, front five, lead by 37. Castillo and Doherty back to back opens, and uh, Barrett and Palermo can really take control here. Semifinal match, winner advances to the title match. PBA titles on the line, Norm Duke and Wes Malott are seated into the title match. Winner if, here will move on. If Duke and Malott were to win, it would break. Norm Duke, Pete Weber title tie. Norm Duke would take over third place all time by himself. He would get Wes Mlot his 10th. Palermo high flush. Uh, he's happy that was 10 in the pit, not five, because that ball came dangerously yeah. close to over hooking down lane and going through the face. Fortunately, it didn't. He's already left of fifth arrow. He's playing about the 27th board already. Don Barrett is about, oh, 15 boards right of that. He's got his daughter's name on the collar of his high five jersey. That's what he was pointing at. Front six. That was oh. high from the get-go, big four. That? How did it do that? The ball looked like it hit hooked as soon as it hit the lane. Left or right? <laughs> Open frame still a 29 pin advantage for Barrett and Palermo. Doherty. And Castillo must double to get back into this. Dino Castillo here in the seventh on the back to back opens. Very upright at release. Well, he's trying to loft it, and when you when you're trying to get a little air underneath it, you want to stand up on it at the foul line and I mean, you think about Loft, you think of Mika Koivuniemi, who's a big, tall man who doesn't use a lot of knee bend. That's what aids him in Loft in the front part of the lane. All right, let's make it happen. You and me. Big star on Dino Castillo's jersey. I wonder if that's got anything to do with maybe liking the Dallas Cowboys. Just throwing it out there. Most certainly. Doherty in the eighth. Strikes. Shot. Figures a bad one strikes and a good one ring ten. Unbelievable. You gotta move. Commercial break. Move off the because they sat that little bit. So just make the move and trust I it. Did. Move a little bit more. Okay. We need one now. Good advice. Tom Doherty saying, hey, Dino, keep moving. He said, I moved off of the commercial break. He said, well, keep going. Is that good advice? I, absolutely. If he feels like he threw it good, and he four pin, you got to keep going. Ten pin. Boy, he's left enough of those today. Yeah, I mean, if you throw a good shot, Mike Jane, you go four pin, you got to move off of it. Let's see if the uh, audience uh, gives us that Indy oh, yeah. 500 <laughs> sound it. effect. Yeah, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait, not yet. Spare ball in hand. 
Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and the green flag. There it is. And the checker and the 10 pin <laughs> erased. <laughs> Ignition, blast off. Man, does that ball come down there fast with some bad intentions. Can you imagine if you were standing down there? Or you were like the mechanic in the back and you're reaching your arm down there maybe to clear a pin jam or something? How fast do you think that's going? It's probably about 24, 25, maybe, maybe faster. Foundation frame. Ten pin. See, so this is uh, where we started this conversation at the beginning of this match where you said, why are they striking a lot? Well, they were hitting the pocket and they, they were carrying, and now it's right, ring 10, ring that. 10. So uh, that's what's going to slow down, slow down the scores. And oh, no. an open frame on the missed 10 pin on, on is that. going to open up the door. <sighs> Sorry. Well, that's not a good spot for that to happen. They could actually lose now. If Castillo and Doherty strike out, they can shoot 233. The best Don Barrett and Oscu Palermo can shoot is 230. Talk about turn of events, but Dino Castillo has to strike on this ball. He's given advice by his partner. That's key in doubles. Now can he execute? Ninth frame. Oh, nine pin. Good pitch. That was a really good shot and uh, a, a really bad break. I mean, they needed that strike right there to, to have any chance of getting back in this. And or the best they can shoot now is 213. Good shot. That's all you can do. All right. Good shot, man. You never know. Finish it. Come on. Strikes in the 10th would force a mark at least out of Barrett and Palermo. Yep. And now they don't need that. Mm. Oscu, Palermo, Dom Barrett climbing the ladder. Making it all the way to the tournament leaders, Norm Duke and Wes Millot. Don Barrett, the happiest man in the building. Absolutely, great point. You missed a 10 pin that could ultimately cost your team the win. Boy, you, you just want to find a place to hide. Sorry, bro. No, we put it there. Doesn't matter to me. We put it there. How did you say? So the good spirits of uh, Doherty and Castillo as Barrett and Palermo will advance. Looks like Palermo's making a ball change. He is. Went to something less aggressive. One more 10 pin. Be interesting to see which player bowls, bowls on which lane. Does Norm take, take on Palermo on the right lane or does he stay with Barrett on the left lane? Here it comes. And you definitely heard it that time. Palermo with that little head swagger picks up the 10. Tom Baird and Oscar Palermo advance to the title match. They get Norm Duke and Wes Mallott next. Welcome back to Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana. Title match coming up in the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship. Time now for the Geico Championship recap. Don Barrett, Oscu Palermo taking on Sean Maldonado and DJ Archer. And it was all about Dom and Oscu. Big strikes, some open frames early for Sean and DJ, and they couldn't recover. Then the twosome would take on the two-handed sensation from down under, Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill. But it was back-to-back -back opens for O'Neill and Belmonte, and Oscu just kept mowing them down. 
Then in the match we just saw, it. they would take on Dino Castillo and Tom Doherty. Dino would split in the fifth. Tom would miss a 10 pin in the sixth. And again, it was just more Osku. This team overcame an open in the seventh and the ninth. Osku throws a flush hit there on his field shot. They win 220 to 201. PBA titles on the line, Randy, and momentum is serving Barrett and Palermo very well at this point. Can it last through the title match? Well, we're going to find out. I, I really like the team, though, that's, that, that's going into the title match that has the momentum. They know exactly how the lanes have been transitioning throughout the entire competition. Wes and Norm, albeit as great as they are, they don't have that luxury. But I, I could never bet against Norm Duke and Wes Milan. I'm just saying. It's tough indeed to go up against those two, but Oscu Palermo and Don Barrett will do just that, taking on Norm Duke and Wes Malott in the championship match of the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship, uninterrupted, next. Roth Holman PBA Devils Championship match from Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis. There's your tournament leaders. Norm Duke and Wes Vallott. And uh, they will face Dom Barrett and Oscar Palermo looking to run the table here and claim PBA titles in the Roth Holman. Top seeds indicate that Barrett and Palermo will begin here. And there are Marshall Holman and Mark Roth. Mark and Denise Roth, great to see Let them me. with us. <sighs> Opening shot, title match. Three, six, nine, ten. Well, one thing about going up against Wes Malott and Norm Duke, Definitely there's one thing now. you can be sure of. Norm Duke, anytime he's on television, it's all business. We talk about the fun aspect of this event. And yeah, and I get all that, but this guy is all about winning. Even talking to him in the interviews, uh, the tone just gets very, very important. He knows how important these opportunities are. A nice cover for Barrett, and there is Norm Duke. Norm and West defending champions. Norm is tied with Pete Weber on the all-time PBA Tour titles list. With a win, he would take third place on his own. And Norm is aware of it. Six around the 10. And he's bowling on the hook lane, and I call it the hook lane because that's where Oscu Palermo has set up camp throughout this uh, telecast. Norm Duke takes his hand out of it and kind of throws that little puck knuckle ball right up second arrow, kind of where Bill O'Neill was playing, kind of where Dino Castillo was playing. Spare for Duke. The last time this event was contested was in 2011 in Vegas. Duke and Malat were seated second there and defeated Mike Fagan and Bill O'Neill and uh, Sean Rash and Ronnie Russell for the title. Now partner Wes Malott steps up. Wes looking for his 10th career title would seal his Hall of Fame credentials. Big Wes labels a big strike. He's a lot. He's a lot of fun to watch. I, I really love the motion of Wes Malott, and he's able to play the lanes a lot of different ways. He, very versatile, but he can get in and hook it with the best of them. He's got that unique rotation and a great, unique release at the bottom of the swing. He can do some things with a bowling ball that I just can't do, that a lot of people out on this tour can't do. 
and that's what makes him fun to watch, not to mention the fact that he's a good guy and he's big. Spare strike for Dugan Malat. Palermo's working on the barricade spare, and the mm. ninth hit. I can't remember the last time Oskew missed the pocket today. I'm going to go back and look at some of the score sheets from earlier and see if I can come up with something. Nice little shot here, leaving the solid nine. Well. Palermo chooses to hook at it rather than throwing the, the missile. He was aiming at 10 pins earlier. Tag team over now to his partner, Dom Barrett. Wait for that. Osku has missed the pocket once today. Left the 3 6 10 in the second match and missed it. 10th frame. That was high early, 4 7 10 split. This is going to be three consecutive opens for Don Barrett going back to the last game. Excuse me. Three out of four, he did spare in the first, making the three, six, nine, ten. So Barrett leaves a hole, and Kimberly Pressler is lane-side. Kimberly. Thanks, Mike. So, Tom, you guys started off strong. You had four in a row. What changed for you? I don't know, Dino. What, what, what happened there? We had a little momentum going, and you stepped up in the fifth. What happened there, buddy? Well, I, you know, I just got one right quick. Uh, I knew the one in the third. I got quick. Uh, so I tried to make an adjustment, got the uh, next one quick, and then so I, I made an attempt at my spare, and then you left the 10 pin. What happened on the 10 pin? Well, I know that you missed that spare, and I didn't want you to feel bad, so I figured I'd miss mine on purpose, <laughs> get us back to the level playing field, and then we'll go from there. All right. Uh, all right, well, then there you go. The guys, back to you. They're doing my job for me. I love it. Those are teammates to the very end, Randy. Tell you what, nobody got thrown under the bus on that team. Norm Duke, a little ripper seven there. Left the 10 pin in the first frame, lower seven in the third. Spare for Norm Duke, and uh, just to see Mark Roth here is so great. He's had some health issues, and he's uh, coming back strong. And I'm telling you, the smile when he was here this week was as wide as he hooked it. Yeah, well, known Mark for a long, long time. And He's just a, a great human being and one of the greatest our sport ever knew. I mean, he had some records out here that may never be broken. I think he cashed in 52 consecutive events and then missed the next week by like a pin and then went on to cash in another 30 in a row or something. It was crazy. He doesn't miss a ball going down the lane either. And, uh, that six pin doesn't miss the 10 strike for Duke and Malat. Malat doesn't miss a lot either. But there was a heartbreaker recently for Big West at January's PBA World Championship where he trailed Mike Fagan in the final. But Fagan would split in the eighth, opening the door from a lot. Wes with a chance. But this solid nine shattered any chance he had at the second major championship of his career. Palermo after the open in the fourth. The commissioner of the PBA Tour, Tom Clark, bringing back the greats like Holman and Roth and Salvino and honoring the great history of the PBA dating back to its inception in 1958. I'm not sure there's anybody that loves professional bowling more than Tom Clark. That's a fair bet. Each team is on a strike, fifth frame. Each team trying to double for the first time in this match, and Don Barrett unable to.
Norm Duke trying for title number 38 today. His first coming 32 years ago at the 1983 Cleveland oh, Open. No. Among those, the 18-year-old Duke beat on the stepladder that day, the great Earl Anthony, before going on to defeat Tom Milton in the final. Six in a row, Nelson. Got it to mix. He said help as soon as he let go of it. He missed it just enough at the bottom, but he got it in the right spot in the pocket, and the 16-pound ball took care of the rest. If that was 15 pounds, I don't think he strikes on this ball. There's just a little miss right there at the bottom, and it had just enough rotation to get back and catch enough of the head pin for a mixer. Your first double, and they've increased their lead now to 25. Duke Mallott, double and clean, and the hammer is in the hand of Wes Mallott. Sixth frame, title match. Mm. Don't make the big fella angry. You won't like him when he's angry. He used to have so many different nicknames, and I, and I really liked a lot of his nicknames, but he told me, he says, Randy, you can't use those anymore because they're bad luck. It's just beast, period. I'll go with Big Wes Mallott. About seventh arrow deep and a nine pin for Mallott. Pencil out over there. You know, it wasn't long ago I was mentioning the solid nine he left at the World Championship. Give me one. And here's another solid nine. It looked like the ball was just a shade left and it's all right. Just enough to, for that ball to go right past that nine pin. Covers the spare, 24 pin advantage. A big guy that's coming back from a knee surgery and Not my best. I mean, he's bowling about as good as anyone out here. And God, come on. Very important sixth and seventh frame coming up for the team of Palermo and Barrett. I think more so for Dom Barrett. Osku's hitting the pocket, he's throwing strikes, albeit just won this game, but he. He left a solid nine, then he struck. He's thrown two shots this game, and both shots have been flush. I mean, like I said, it, they climbed the ladder. They started in that opening match, and he's missed the pocket once today. Talk about your MVP. You're looking at it right there. That guy's just been a monster. Crucial shot now, handed off to the partner, Dom Barrett. Shot and again in the nose. He's absolutely lost his look on the left lane. Three, six, ten. Right now, looking to just convert the spare to somehow stay close in this match. It's a good spare, good solid spare. sequencing for two, and that one's packed into the pocket. You can see it was the same line as the last shot he threw on that lane, but it had a little bit more rotation to it. And that's what got it to suck up into the 1-3. Now Wes Malott, see if he can pure one off his hand here in the eighth frame, and take a commanding lead, coming down the home stretch of the title match, the Mark Roth Marshall Holman Doubles Championship. Norm said, we want Wes's ball in the anchor position until further notice. Eighth frame. That's a good shot right there. Go! Let's go! Big mix for Big Wes. Ah. That was a great shot. I know. Stay there. All right, going over. Our 34 pin, pin lead. Here. I'll tell you what, he got pretty fortunate here. Shot right there. 
He thought that ball was going to hook flush, and it barely tripped the seven out. Not saying it was a bad shot, just didn't react the way he thought it would. <laughs> Norm Duke. I loved it. I loved it. Must strike. Eighth frame. Actually must double. And no, four pin. They're in trouble. Big trouble. Down 35 with two frames to go. And his partner has no idea where to throw it on the left lane. Dom is lost. He's tried going straight. It goes high. A little bit of room. It goes light. Then he tries to give it a little hand. It goes high. Dom's left the 3-6. 9-10 and the 3-6-10, along with the 4-7-10 split. He's in trouble. That was the first frame. That was the third frame. And this is the seventh frame. What do you do now? As a player, you're like scratching your head going, well, maybe I should just reach in my pocket and flip a coin. Interesting. He just moved a little right and just heaved it. Never mind. Oh my gosh. He's like, you know what? I'm just gonna fire it right at the 1-3 and that's exactly what he does here. And then the six just caves the 10 out. Pretty impressive shot there. It's like, hey, I got nothing to lose. Live and die. Norm Duke Strike. trying to get into third position all time on the all time titles list. Light. Seven pin stands. Got Boy, away that, with it, partner. That would have closed the deal right there, a strike yeah, there, and they wouldn't even need a mark in the 10th frame. <sighs> Spare it up. They're at 218 right now. The best Don Barrett, Otsku, Palermo can shoot 204. All they have to Spare do is fill a frame. As a matter of fact, if Norm spares here, West Malott needs good count in the 10th frame, and it's over. Oh, yeah. West Malott needs eight and one, and it's over. Come on. Thank you. The importance of this is right here, West Malott Denied a 10th title at the PBA World Championship. Can pick it up here, seal his Hall of Fame credentials. Yes! 10 titles for Wes Malat, Norm Duke. Passes Pete Weber love, with 38. I'm in love with you. <laughs> well, they successfully defend it. Norm found a way to gain another title. It's all about picking the right partner. All fame and duck. And boy, right? they, they ham and egg it <laughs> together brilliantly. Yes. Throughout qualifying in this event, Norm was an absolute beast playing the outside part of the lane. Wes Malott said, you know what? I'm going to play the inside part of the lane, stay away from my partner. But it was all yeah, about Wes Malott coming down the stretch and throwing great shots to seal the deal for his team. Neither player missing the pocket in this title match. Pretty good stuff there. Norm saying earlier, our decisions seldom affect each other. This team is never shut out. Not only are they never shut out, they win back-to-back -back doubles titles. <laughs> 228. Final score, 10th PBA Tour Congrats. title Congrats. for West Malat. 38th for Norm Duke. Moscu and Dom finishing up. And Wes Malott receiving congratulations from Mark Roth. Yes, we did. And Marshall Holman also side by side to congratulate our champions. Also with Carmen Salvino, charter member of the PBA. <laughs> Wes Malott, Bulls anchor until further notice. Champions at the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship. We'll hear from our champions next.
The Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship is brought to you by AMF. Roll this way. By the USBC, a future for the sport. By Brunswick, find your next ball at bowlwithbrunswick.com. And by hotelplanner.com, the best place to book hotel rooms. Best rooms, best rate, guaranteed. Final score of the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship match. Wes Malott, Norm Duke 228, Dom Barrett, Oscar Palermo 203. Duke and Malott are our champions. Randy Peterson has jumped down lean side and he is with our runners up. Thanks, Mike J. First of all, guys, congratulations on a great run. It was a lot of fun to watch. And Dom, I'll start with you first. You decided to stay on the left lane and play that lane much straighter than how Oscar was playing the right lane. What was based on, or what did you base that decision on? Well, really, you just saw the traffic that was going to be there. Um, when you come from the fifth seed or fourth seed and you have to run the whole ladder, you, there's so many shots on the lane. If you win a game and everyone else gets to come on and practice, and I really didn't think like I'd be able to have a good reaction dealing with everyone else's transition. So I tried to find something a little straighter. Um, I had it for quite a long time, and you know, even in the second match, it kind of went away a little bit, and I had to trick it a little bit, and it just kind of kept becoming more of a guess because more people would bowl in the lane and mm -hmm. high rev rate guys. Uh, the lights as well kind of takes the oil away a little bit and kind of gets stuck a little in there. But, you know, we bowled really well together. Um, Oscar bowled fantastic as well. But the guys who won, you know, deserving champions, and congratulate them as well. Don, thanks very much for your time. Oscar, you got my MVP. I, I told Mike J uh, throughout the telecast, I think this is the best I've seen you throw it in quite a long time. What do you attribute that to? It was just go out there and have fun. It's been a while since I was on TV and just go there and have fun. And actually, I wasn't, no, I wasn't sure if I was going to do what Dom did or go left. Decided like the last practice shot to go there and then pull a pretty good. Uh, too bad that Dom had a bad uh, moment there, but we bowled amazing, so. Congratulations, guys. Norm Duke and Wes Malott embrace in victory. Norm getting his first PBA Tour win way back in 1983 in Cleveland, Ohio as a teenager. And now today at the age of 50, Duke gets victory number 38, surpassing Pete Weber to take the number three spot all for himself on the all-time titles list. What an incredible career. And Wes Malott with his win reaches double digits, 10. Hall of Fame territory for Big Wes. Kimberly Pressler is on victory lane with our champions. I sure am. I'm also with the uh, tournament names here, right here. Marshall, why don't you go ahead and hand out those trophies? All right. Congratulations, Big Wes. Great tournament. Second one in a row. Thank you, sir. My buddy Norm, who I've known for 34 years. Congratulations, Norm. You're, a, you're amazing. 38 titles. Way to go. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you very much. And we also have Mark Roth here, and I'm sure you guys really like this with a check presentation. Congratulations, Wes and Norm. You, Looks Mark. like a repeat. Thank you very much. I'll it take sure this part, okay? <laughs> it sure is a repeat. Congratulations to you both for defending your title now. Wes, let's talk real quick. This is your 10th win, which means you are now eligible for the Hall of Fame. What does that mean to you? Well, it really couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, kind of beginning of the week, we started off with Hall of Fame ceremonies and everything. And uh, to me, it, it meant a little bit to me to, to do that. And obviously the solid nine there in the middle of the game, I thought might come into play again as it did at the uh, the world championship but I, I put that past and talked to Norm and committed to it and uh, I was fortunate enough that I had a great partner to set me up and and be able to bring this thing home. Are you going to tear up a little bit here because it's a big moment? It, it is a little bit. Um, it means a lot. I'm not a, a real emotional guy but uh, it definitely means a lot to me. Well congratulations to you. All right, so this means with this win, you now surpass Pete Weber on the third all-time PBA title list. What does that mean to you? I'm an emotional ball bag, <laughs> not unlike you. <laughs> I cry when I see you know, sad commercials, but I, I, I will figure it out one day. I think uh, just to be ahead of Pete Weber for a day is one of the most amazing things that I'll ever do in the, in the sport of bowling. But right now, I'm thinking more about Wes and what he has accomplished today in uh, getting qualified for the Hall of Fame. He's, he's going to get in there. I know it. And uh, he'll look back one day and say, you know what? You know, 
uh, Norm and I got two of those together, just like I look at him and say, you know, without Wes, then uh, I'm behind Pete Weber. Well, congratulations to you both on defending your championship title. Thank you. Thank you. Join us for our next PBA Tour telecast, March 29th at 5 Eastern. Quarterfinals action in the PBA League, March 29th, 5 Eastern on ESPN. Indianapolis has witnessed the greatest spectacle in doubles bowling. North Duke passes Pete Weber for third on the all-time list. Wes Millat earns his 10th title, go, minimum go. requirement for Hall of Fame consideration. And they did it together. Yeah. For Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, this is Mike Jakubowski. Congratulations, North Duke and Wes Millat, Roth Holman, doubles champions.